Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to make an art journal page using the reversing the stencil technique and another stencil technique. Now in order to do the reversing stencil technique, I want to get a black background and I am using black gesso. And I'm choosing to use black gesso. This one's from the Crafters Workshop because it's a nice matte finish. You could use black acrylic paint if you want, and depending on your paint, it may be, have a little bit of a sheen to it. It's all workable. You could put any other color in the background here, but I prefer the black. Now I'm using this Modern Art Circles Stencil, also from the Crafters Workshop. There's a link in the description box below, and you can purchase it from the their Shopify store if you wish. Now I chose this stencil for this technique because it has wide open spaces. And I'm taking the time to tape this down. I'm going to do a lot of stenciling and I don't want my stencil to move. So I am taping it all the way down around the edges. You'll thank yourself for doing taking the time to do that extra step. So with the reversing the stencil technique, everything that you now see white, which is stencil material, will stay black. Everything else, which I am now covering with white acrylic paint, is going to be colorized. And that's how we are reversing the stencil. Because if I was putting this, if I had put color on first, and stenciled through the stencil, everything that is in the open spaces would be black. And that is another option that you can do. So I'm putting white paint through the stencil, I'm applying it with a makeup sponge. I am dipping into the paint and then tapping off on my glass table so that I don't end up with too much paint. I don't want a whole lot of seepage underneath the stencil, which is also why I've taped it down. I'm going over some areas as it dries to make it a little bit more opaque, a little bit more whiter. If you're not already a subscriber to my channel, please take the time to hit the subscribe button, click on the bell, and select the option to be notified of upcoming videos. So I go through this several times, adding more layers. Now you're going to be tempted to look what's happening, but you don't want to move that stencil. I'm going to use quinacridone magenta, orange, and Naples yellow. I'm going to apply that through the stencil, blending as I go. Now you'll notice that I didn't show that I had dried that paint. You do not want to use the heat tool when you have the stencil material on it. That could warp or melt your melt your stencil and you really don't want to do that. So I'm adding color as I go. I want to have some variation on here. And yes, it's tempting to look, but you again don't want to move that stencil because you'll never line it up exactly and that's just going to give you a different effect. So I'm mixing the paint, dipping into the quinacridone magenta, the orange, the Naples yellow, and blending right on as I stencil through the stencil. So you can see how whatever was non-stencil material will now be colorized. But I'm going to have that bold black work or bold black contrast that's just going to give wow to this background. Now I chose this pattern because it had wide open spaces. I'm loving the geometric uh, patterns um, with the circles. Now 
Now you could have chosen to use any color. I love the brightness and boldness that this contrast between the black that will be revealed and these colors. You could use lime green and light blue permanent, pretty much any color. But because the black is the contrasting color, you don't wanna to go too terribly dark. Now I'm letting this dry after I apply this color. And it's a bit of a experiment because you're not really sure how, what it's going to look like. But trust me, this technique always delivers. Here I'm just adding a little bit more color, some Naples yellow. And I'm letting this dry before I move to the next step. I want to add some more pattern to the background, so I'm going to do another technique. I am going to stamp through the stencil. So I left that in place, and I'm using this small scale script stamp, putting black acrylic paint on it. You can use archival ink if you prefer. I prefer the acrylic paint. It adds a little bit of texture as well. And I'm just stamping right through the stencil. I'm just spraying my stamp with my Murphy's oil soap and letting that dry and I'm moving on. Now instead of stamping with the gold, I am going to splatter, but I'm going to splatter through the stencil. This is only going this is going to allow the splatters to only be on the colored section. It's not going to be on any of the black that's going to show up when I remove the stencil. The great reveal, I'll call it. As I'm splattering, I'm targeting the open spaces. That's where I want the splatter. Anything that falls on the stencil is just going to have to be removed from the stencil. So now it's time to reveal. So I'm going to peel off the tape. And let's see what we have. Voila. I love it. The contrast between the bold colors and the black and with the gold and the stamping, it just all works. And it's so incredibly easy. So with such a beautiful background, I'm just going with a black and white or grayscale photo. This is from, I'm not sure if it's Pixabay or another free printables, um, free domain place. Now I'm putting it off to the side because I didn't like all that black in the corner there. And I chose a sentiment from my Reach for the Star sentiment pack. That's available for purchase at Nitty's Napkins. There's a link in the description box as well if you're interested in going and checking it out. You can see where that black behind, I'm just kind of blocking that off. Now I chose this sentiment because in the end we are all dreamers in an endless universe because the geometric pattern seemed to read cosmic to me. I've glued that down with my fluid matte medium. That's my preferred adhesive. Now I'm going to do some shading around the sentiment around the page and around my focal image. This is just going to frame the page and set off the focal image. I'm using my angle brush with black acrylic paint to do this shading edging technique. And if you've watched me before, you'll know that pretty much every page 
get shading and edging. So it's a technique well worth learning how to do. What colors would you use in the background? Let me know in the description or in the comment section. As to the focal image, I'm not sure what site I got that from. But when I do go into sites like Pixabay that have free domain pictures and free printables, I tend to spend some time searching and I save them on my computer. And sometimes I print them off and keep them in a stash so they're ready to go for an art journal page. I resize this one so that it's perfect for this seven by 10 art journal page. I bet started to do a little bit of that shading in the, oh, some of the larger open spaces that I stenciled through. In all honesty, I preferred it brighter and bolder instead of adding this. But if you like that muted look that it gives you, there's an option. This page took me under 30 minutes to do, minus the drying time. So if you're looking for a quick, easy page, this is it. I grabbed my Posca pan. I was going to do some outlining. And then I said, you know what? I am happy with it the way it is. I heat up the tape, that loosens the glue, and it makes it easier for me to remove the tape without pulling off any of the paper. I've got pictures of close-ups, but who doesn't love this page? I know I do. Until next time, go get creative.